Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a full lawn. So, today we're going to have a great broadcast. All right. Please share the live, share the live, share the live. Please share the live. Please, ladies and gentlemen, share the live, share the live, please. Yes, get to the live, ladies and gentlemen. I am rating for you. I am rating for you because today we're going to have a great broadcast. Our live today is going to be to be very energetic. You're going to learn many things. That's why I am rating. I am rating for you. I am rating, I am rating for you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to a full long. Please share the life. Share the life, share the life, share the life. So good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen, a full long information languages. So today um it's a pleasure for me to be here with you and in this live where we are going to have a great time together we are going to um practice english with teacher wa ari and don't forget our our mission as i'm used to saying is to is to um teach you english and gives you information around the world that's why today we are going to we are going to have a little talk. We are going to have a little talk to. We are going to have a little talk with teacher Valentino. Um, he's going to um, share his idea with us. All right. So that's that's why we are going to talk to him. So thank you so much for those who are already here with me. In this platform, so thank you so much. We have Paul Mika Sinclair, we have Mr. Kebby, and we have Mr. Valentino. Of course, I'm going to receive it in my studio. And guys, don't forget, English is a great factor. You don't have to neglect in your life. All right, that's why. I am encouraging you to learn English, to learn English, because it will help you, ladies and gentlemen.
Yes. All right. So that's the way it is. That's the way it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's the way it is, ladies and gentlemen. And I think we are going to have a great time with teacher Valentino, of course. Yes, okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now we are waiting for um, Valentino, of course. Valentino, he's going to be with us and share his share his idea with us because it's very important for me to receive him uh, because he's going to share his knowledge because he he has been studying languages and and he has been studying English and uh, linguistic faculty of linguistics so that's why today he's he's there with us to share his idea to to share what he has learned with us of course so please share the live 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 and i think today we're gonna have teacher valentino and we're gonna have teacher rems as well they are going to be here so uh, I after I'm gonna I'm gonna start I'm gonna start after two minutes please share the live teacher Valentino let's share the live because we have people on Facebook people on YouTube now they are waiting for us because they have been motivated to listen to your brother because I tell them that you are a young professional teacher linguist so I think after I'm gonna get you get you live so that you are going to introduce yourself tell who you are. Um, who is Valentino? And we have Mr. Rams as well in the building. So today the broadcast is going to be very great. Oh, Jesus. So ladies and gentlemen, please share the live. Guys, if you see, and now I am sharing the live. I am sharing the live with all my friends. Please share the live, ladies and gentlemen, to, to know the best method to learn English. All right? Because, you know, English is very important for you. So if you have this opportunity to learn English, learn it. So now let's start. Let me get Valentino, all right? Valentino, it's a pleasure for me to... It's a pleasure for me, Teacher Valentino, to welcome you in Efolon, Information Languages, where we promote English and give information around the world. So... Today, you are our special guest. We are going to talk about the method to learn good English. And you have been studying languages at ENS, Ecole Normale Superior, and at Linguistic Faculty. So today, I think you are going to explain us what is the best, what is the best method that someone can use to learn um, languages. But before... Um, we have teacher Rams. Let me say before, let me get teacher Rams. As you know, that Rams is, how can I say, mm -hmm. one of the men who, who has a highly respect for Valentino. That's why today he, he's in the broadcast with, with me as well. So, Mr. Valentino, my first question is that you are going to introduce yourself because Rams, I think my public has already known Rams because I had many broadcasts mm -hmm. with him, but you. You are the guest today. The time is yours. I just want you to introduce you to, to tell my audience um, who is Valentino, where is he from, what is he or what has he been studying, and what he is studying. Welcome to yeah. A for Learn Information Languages. Welcome, Valentino. Hello. hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Of course, Hi. I hear you. All right, my name is Ralph Valentino Jean. My company name is Ralph Valentino Jean Isidore. Um, I live in Porto Prince, Haiti. Uh, yes. I'm from Porto Prince as well. Um, I am, uh, I'm very passionate about language learning, uh, philosophy and linguistics in general. I uh, studied language, languages in, um, in, a, in a state university of Haiti, which is uh, ENS. Uh, if you can consider that in French, it would be Colombo Studio. This is where you have uh, basically a competency just to be a teacher of fine languages and there are other departments as well. And I'm currently uh, majoring in linguistics right now. Uh, I'm in the last year, my fourth year, and I'm actually studying 
uh, descriptive linguistics. So yeah, and I'm also interested in doing um, translation interpretation as well. Okay. I so have. Uh, yeah. yeah. You 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 continue you continue Valentino. Let's go. I have been you know given some you know slight like, language classes online, especially in YouTube. I have a YouTube channel called Sefer Palza where I try to elaborate my methods when it comes to language learning and also talk about spirituality in Haiti in general. So that's me in a nutshell. Yo, Mr. Rams, how are you, brother? Welcome, because today, like you, you have been waiting for the podcast, but welcome for joining. So how are you, brother? So, I can, yes. can you hear me? Yeah, yes, I can hear you. All right. Thank you so much, Junior. And it's uh, really a pleasure for me to be here uh, tonight, to be here with you guys. And I say tonight because for those who are living in Turkey, it's night. And for those who are living in Haiti, it's it's afternoon. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. because local time, you know, when it comes to talk about what we call time zone, it's kind of different. And I want to start by saying thank you, Junior. And to have invited me to be around with the guests whom I really appreciate. And this is one of my senior, let's say this is one of the, <laughs> one of the student from I would, ENS. I would, I would like, I would like, I would like when Mr. Rames, when Mr. Rames is calling on senior, I say, come on, come on, Rames, what's going on? <laughs> of course, because yes, we did. The, so there is a proverb which goes, uh, we need to give credit where credit is due. So Definitely. when something is deserved, we should tell the truth exactly. So we must not wait until the person die and, you know, to make a very long speech on the dead body. So we need to do it as the time that the person is living. This is exactly why I'm really proud. I can say I feel on the top of the world if you give me the chance. Because, Ooh. yeah, because I'm around with you. My two seniors, let's say my two favorite seniors whom I have, I had been yeah. following in the school. And today, again, guys, it's uh, a pleasure to be here around with you. And thank you for inviting me, Mr. Valentino. Thank you and welcome to you. Mr. Valentino, <laughs> welcome. I don't have anything more to say. Today we are going to be tackling languages, the best method to learn languages. Language. We are not going yeah. to base, but probably we are going to base on English, Mr. Reims. We are going to base on Spanish because Reims speaks French, English, and Spanish. Valentino speak French, English, and Spanish, and Portuguese, and many other languages. Uh, so mm -hmm. now, Mr. Valentino, you know that there are many students. They want to learn English. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, they have been to school for one to three months. They gave up. Some of them, they are learning, but they cannot practice. You as a linguist. So, mm -hmm. Mr. Valentino, you have your time to mm -hmm. have your introduction about languages. And after, me and Mr. Rames, we have some important questions that our mm -hmm. audience are waiting for them to ask you. And I think mm -hmm. after presenting, after explaining, but I just want you to go very slow because we have many beginners and, and the show now, you see, I, you know, they, 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 they keep writing me and after I'm going I'm, I, I, I'm gonna to read the, the they said they say keep working, Olivier Olido probably if, uh, Valentino student they say keep working and for long. So there are many comments, but I'm not going to base on comments now. Now I'm going to base on Valentino Reigns, who is going to tell us the details uh, linguistically uh, what are uh, or what is the best method or method to learn a language. Valentino, now you get the floor. Thank you, thank you so much, Mr. General Lucien. Um, it's a really good question, as I said before. Language learning is a very interesting process, and it's something that a lot of people are basically interested in um, doing, especially with the rise of globalization, people are trying to uh, interact with uh, one another all around the world. So language learning is, is, uh, is, is, is paramount in this world, in this modern world. And it's a great way for everyone just to find a way to learn a second language, a third, a fourth, or fifth, et cetera, because you get to talk to other people from different cultures, different uh, linguistic varieties, and different ways of seeing reality in general. And um, I think that language is 
is a linguistic tool, the tool is a code that we use in order to communicate our thoughts, our behaviors, our um, feelings, etc., our passions as well. And um, a lot of people, they struggle when it comes to language learning because they basically think that language learning can be, all, uh, can be only done, especially when you sit in the classroom, and then you're learning from a teacher, which is fantastic, right? You have a really great way, a really great method in order to move on in language learning in general. But language learning should be made in a very natural, spontaneous way, right? When, you come, when it comes to learn a second language or third or fourth, et cetera, uh, there should be a very natural way to approach the language. And the best way to approach the language is by immersing yourself in the language, using different um, you know, content in the, in the internet, books, you're reading, etc. So I think that when it comes to language learning, people have to be very, 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 very uh, thorough. They have to be thorough when it comes to language learning, and they have to find a way to make it fun. Not just, you know, learning languages and trying to, uh, to imagine a lot of words, emulate, you know, the way that a native speaker speaks in general, but the, the, the person should have a very natural approach to the language in general. And I think that in Haiti, especially, um, I have, you know, a lot of friends, a lot of people in Haiti that are actually learning languages, they're learning English, and they spend a lot of years learning English, like five, six, seven, and eight, even 10 years learning English. They never come close to be able to speak the language um, like a native speaker or being able to understand a native speaker. What's the problem? What's the, uh -huh. what's the ungrateful problem? You know, uh, that impeding them from understanding a native speaker whenever the native speaker is trying to illustrate something, he's expressing himself in the native tongue. So, first and foremost, we have to pay, you know, a little attention to what we call uh, uh, TPS, which is a very um, um, natural way to approach the language. You can learn the language just by, you know, watching videos on YouTube. You can learn the language by immersing yourself in a content that is very appealing to you. For example, when I first started le learning English, I was maybe uh, 14, 15 years ago, um, years old, I think back in, you know, right after the earthquake, I was introduced to the language by an American nurse. Uh, I went, there's a nurse, you know, right by my house, still, still there, it's called TID. And a bunch of American mm -hmm. people used to come up there, they used to give a lot of, you know, um, you know, heal people, cure diseases, you know, right after the earthquake, so a lot of, you know, these cases in Haiti. And um, mm -hmm. this, that nurse, I still have the book with me, the book that she used in order to help me to master um, the English um, in intonation, the English prosody. Um, he told me the way that I have to read the language using you know different punctuations and the way that I have to read in natural speech. And also she helped me with the um, you know the way that I have to learn grammar and the way that I have to learn yes, vocabulary. Yeah, and she told me that learning the language, she was a linguist, by the way, she had a degree in, in nursing and in linguistic at the same time. And I was very proud and very happy just to have her, like my first professor. It was, you know, basically we had like a couple of months together because she went back to the USA. And she never came back, um, you know, to Haiti. And um, those five, four years, they were the first, they were very, 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 very mesmerizing. And I can vividly remember the way that she taught me how to learn vocabulary words. It was just by using the word, learning the word from a different, from exactly the context of the word. You don't really have to go to a dictionary unless you're reading a piece of literature, right? If you're reading Shakespeare, you're reading um, Charles Dickens, you're reading uh, Milton, all these great writers in English, you should go to the dictionary in order to, you know, to discover new vocabulary words that have to do with their literary content. But for day-to-day -day conversation, day-to-day -day practice, day-to-day -day English, um, it's very important to pay attention to the continuity of the language rather than going to a dictionary and looking for specialized terms to express yourself that people are not going to be able to, you're not going to be uh, um, felt like you're speaking the language as a native speaker. So I think that language learning is very important and we have to develop a, a direct and a very uh, possible uh, method, if you, if you will, just to learn a second language because it's very important. And I would say that in this world, if you don't speak a second, a second language is just a tool, right? To, you know, uh -huh. to connect to other people, to connect to different nationalities. Um, yes. If you don't have that, um, this linguistic tool, it's going to be very difficult for you to operate in this modern world. 
And the best way uh, to do that, if I can say that in a nutshell, is by developing a, a method that works. And the best method that works is, is, is immersing yourself in the language in a mo the most natural and spontaneous way. Okay, now, Mr. Mr. Valentino, congratulations, because you have, you have had, you have had exposed everything, and I think everything is clear. Mr. Reigns, mm -hmm. I think now you are noting and you have your question. Mr. Valentino, yeah. let me drop into to my question. Um, mm -hmm. Let's talk about languages. One, two, three. One, two, three. For you, what yes. are the barriers that prevent mm -hmm. students from learning English? Do you think that uh, not, not, not learning English, learning languages, because sometimes mm -hmm. they say they are, they, they, they are, they are shy, sometimes they mm -hmm. say that oh, I will not be able to speak, because mm -hmm. um, I don't have my accent is not okay. You as a linguist, do you think that mm -hmm. those um those things can 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 prevent the student from learning a language? In your opinion, mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. I think that can I see? Yeah, I can see now. Can I? Excuse me. Can I see? Can I? Yeah. Yes, of, course, yes, of, course. Yes, of course. Of course. Of course. Yes. Uh, very good. So I think that uh, in most in everything, virtually in everything, is what the the, the, the most difficult uh, barrier to overcome when it comes to anything is just your internal mindset, your internal uh, way of, of, of processing reality in general. So I think that when it comes to language learning, it is the interior world that keeps people from moving forward. It's the psychological um, downsizing thing. So I think that the one the, i would say the first thing that prevents uh, a person a student to learn as a master second language is basically your internal mindset like you believe that you won't be able to do it okay yes so that's the like haiti when it comes to french and haitian creole you can see that a lot of people they went to school for, for 14 16 20 years in their life in haiti they still can speak um, french in a very natural way why it's because that we have this um this chain this mental chain in our brain and then yes. this kind of discrimination and prejudice at the same time uh that keeps us from uh from learning from analyzing the language naturally i think that you have to put yourself in the conditions that you have to say that i'm not a i'm not a, because even kids they start learning the language they start picking the pitch of the language they start picking yes. the, the melody of the language. it's a it's a it's an ongoing process there's a there's a Spanish uh, linguist who says that um, he said that in Spanish um, el lenguaje es a su alcance. It's like your the language itself. It's not something that you're going to learn to get internally. It's something that you have to learn. You know, even though that you're a native speaker, you gradually yes, of course. learn. Like, it. That mean, yeah, that mean you want to tell me uh, le learning languages is a long process. That mean no one <laughs> will 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 be able to to speak English for a length of time. I mean, you have to keep updated everything so that you can speak the language very well, if I understand. Exactly, yeah, exactly. You don't really have to um, say, you know, like, oh, I don't have an advanced you know, level. I don't have an intermediate level, a high intermediate level. I'm just in a beginner. A language is just a way of communicating with people. So you don't really have to worry about, you know, having an advanced level in general, because when, once you get to the later of advanced level, you're just going to yes. see that there's not learn and you still have a lot to learn because you just come to the middle of the journey after the advanced level because after the advanced level is where that you're going to put yourself not in a flight simulator not in a simulator of speaking the language but you're going to be found you're going to be found in the real world where the language is going to be implemented and then you are going to use the language with natural uh real uh native speaker you have to tell yourself well i have to start some, some somewhere so we have to, where do we have to start? You start learning the language, you're picking it up, and then you're using the language uh, through different mediums, through different things that in which you're interested. For example, if you're interested in literature, you can read a lot of literary books in the language, in our case, English. Uh, if you're interested in uh, philosophy, you can read a lot of books in the language, yes. just to process the language, yes. just to make it a yes. reaction. And yes. not just- I, I'm gonna say, excuse me, um, Mr. Valentino, because you are you are saying a lot of great things because many students think that the best way to learn languages is like to learn, for example, if they are learning English, they mm -hmm. like saying in the, only in the English book talking about mm -hmm. grammar, vocabulary. 
I mean, pr probably that person loves literature, that person loves yeah. music, but he ignores like to learn about music and English. So I think what mm -hmm. you're saying now to me is one of the best methods someone can use that to, to speak English. You can exactly, exactly. And um, grammar is just the tip of the iceberg, as a lot of grammar and um say it's like grammar is the extraction of the uh implementation of the language itself right yes. grammar is very limited it's not illimited it's not infinity because in, in english there are around thousands of thousands of rules of english you know gram grammatical rules they're not a lot you can master them you can be a beginner to master all these rules theoretically speaking but grammar is just the extraction and grammar is not the best approach um for anyone that are starting learning the language who wants to move on learning the language because grammar helps you um to articulate um you know more eloquently uh, yes. because you can do a lifetime studying grammar in a way just to implement it uh like a writer like a great writer like shakespeare but being able to communicate is the most important step the most important thing as well because if you know a lot of grammar still you don't know how to communicate in the language that's the waste of time, right? You should know how to communicate first, then you can know a lot of grammar. You can know how to communicate, you don't know grammar. Because, I'm, you know, I, I talk to a lot of, you know, that's the native speakers in English sometimes. Um, I don't correct because I still have that um, American uh, attitude when it comes to, you know, teaching, okay? I, I love the American way of teaching. When I'm speaking to a lot of American people, like, they have the second conditional clause. If I'm a teacher, I can take an example is that, like, you, you have the second conditional clause in English when you have the, uh, the if clause and the main clause, like in the second conditional, if I, da da da, you put the past and of the verb and then you have the yeah. word in the, the main clause. <laughs> like, when you're listening to a native speaker speaking, a lot of songs like you're know, listening to Justin Bieber and all their uh, great singers, you would see that they, would, they don't want to use the subjunctive of, because, you know, subjective in English is not a very elaborate sense, like in Spanish and French and Portuguese. Italian and all the languages that are very elaborate languages. But in English, it's very, you know, it's very, it's very easy to learn. It's very easy to pick up. And then when you listen to native speakers, they would say, if I was, right? Whereas if you're listening to a grammarian, to, to a purist, as language says, yeah. people that are yeah, you very, know where <laughs> exactly. So you would say that they would say, if you were, right? Whereas if I was, is not, is not a way to, the communication will be conveyed. The message will be conveyed. Will be transmitted to, yes. to, yes, to the listener. Exactly. I but agree. if you keep focusing stuff on all of these things, you're still not going to be a teacher. If you're going to be a teacher, well, it's great to use these things. But if you just want English, just to communicate with people, okay, to communicate, yes. understand, okay, other people. I think it's very important to concentrate on interaction, rules of interaction first gonna be a good listener because a lot of people take listening for granted but listening is a, you have to practice listening it's a, it's a skill itself it can be developed yes. right like speaking yes. okay um, and um listening to native speakers listening to great speakers like uh mr rang for rep and uh junior Lee Sen. and then <laughs> you'll be able to um to brush up on your skills yes. speaking skill and your skill at the same time but do not focus you on uh -huh. Yeah, continue, 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 continue. And after, I'm going to give the mic to Mr. Rims. Probably, Mr. Rims exactly. has something to say. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, do not focus on the because the map. Do not focus on the map because the map is not the territory. What I'm thinking about the map, I'm just thinking about the rules, grammar rules, pronunciation rules, all these things. Just immerse in yourself. Like, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Rims. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, brother, I have taken time to listen to you, to your speech. And mm -hmm. trust me, my pen, my notebook, everything is around. So I take <laughs> note. Yes, uh, yes, I take note because I learn new things for myself as well. Yeah, uh, I know some things to ask, you know, some questions. But I don't know if I can ask. Can I ask, Junior? Can I ask? Of course, man. You can ask questions. Come on, man. That's okay. brother. You can ask brother. questions. Yes. So in your speech, you talk about uh, how to understand native speaker and yeah. you, you know, in between parentheses, you see as well how to sound like a native speaker and you talk about words. And me, I know that especially in languages, when it comes to learn languages, I know how much 
words mm -hmm. are polysemic. And mm -hmm. me, I, I have two questions, but I have different questions. I just want to ask two questions. So number one, uh, I want to know, or uh, I want you to tell me or to tell mm -hmm. us, to tell the audience, when you are learning a language, brother, is I mean, is there a final destination when it comes to learn a language? For example, a, okay, me, I am advanced or I am C1 level, I am done. I am completely done, so I am not learning anymore because I get to the final destination. I want you to tell me, to tell us if, when it comes to learn languages, if exactly there is a final destination of learning a language. So okay. question number two, you know, when you are learning languages or when you are at school, I'm talking about primary school or secondary school, they yeah. always define a language as a means of communication. So you know that, I know that, Junior knows that. We know that. In the beginning, they say a, a language is, a, is seen like a means of communication. But when yeah. we... Uh, when we, how can I say, start to deepen our knowledge, linguistically speaking, they mm -hmm. tell us that a language is a dynamic thing. This is something dynamic. This is something which is not static. So in other words, they say English is an evolutive system. Now, yes. my question for you is, which one of these two definitions seems to be the best mm -hmm. one? Language is a means of communication or language is an ev evolutive system? Thank you, brother. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for your question. Uh, mm -hmm. The first, let me start with the second one and then I will just answer the first one because the second one is uh, has to do a lot with what we've been talking about. So first, I would say this is my personal opinion when it comes to language learning and as an experienced uh, student, effective linguist, student of linguistics. I would say that language itself is Setting on this material, which is the father of linguistics, and um, Antoine Meillet, one of the greatest linguists of the 20, of the 20th century, said that language itself is is is, is an evolving um, web of of of, of a cultural web that people use just to share their ideas, knowledge, and um, pieces of information in general. So, to me, in primary school. Um, they give us a pro I would say it's a half truth because you know there's a certain age just to tell people the truth, right? If I come just to talk to you and I say, let's take an example, that God does not exist, and I just come with a bunch of philosophers and I just do that to you that God does not exist. I can say that to you, but I can't say that to a kid, right? Because yes. the kid has a certain way of perceiving reality, and the kid has a, a different interaction with reality, and we have to protect his or her existence, right? His, her ego or his ego. I think in primary schools, it's great to define language as a means of communication because this is what we're basically doing. We're not really focusing on deepening our knowledge on uh, in the language or in the linguistic system in general, but we're trying to communicate, okay, using that linguistic tool. We don't know where it's from. We don't know what, what it is for. The only functionality of the language is communication. So I think that that's right in primary school to tell kids, okay, that language is just a means of communication. But when it comes to later, but after um, high school, when you're in university, you're interested in language uh, and ling linguistic, language learning, language teaching in general, I think it's great to tell language that is a dynamic system. It's not a static, it's not something that you um, learning and then it, it stops from there, but it's always going on, it's always moving forward. Process. And yes. this but uh, yeah, this is what uh, Victor Hugo said about French, you know, back in the um, 18th century, uh, the French Academy, they still do that until the French Academy. This is uh, uh, an establishment of 40 scholars that are, they are the person that are trying to uh, work on the French language. In the 18th century, they said that the French language is, should be st static. Nobody should touch it because it has to be like this, pure. In the 19th century, with uh, Victor Hugo, Victor Hugo says that language is like the web and the flow of the sea, of the ocean. Things go, things come, right? Yes. It's always moving, almost moving. It's, it's generally human interaction in general. 
because we have different mentality. We are interacting with different people. We are talking uh, to different um, people with different mindsets, and we are exposed to different, to different ways, to different perceptions. And we have to integrate language that way, because if we don't, we're always going to uh, lag behind, right? We're always going to be lag behind. So I think the views of like telling language is a means of communication is great for a certain period of time, okay, mm-hmm. in your, oh, your growth. And telling language is, and it is, it is always evolving is, I would say, is closer to the truth itself because language is never static and it will never, it will never be uh, because it's always moving forward. And we, if we take, for example, the birth of uh, Roman languages, French, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, Italian, Romanian, all these languages, they break away from Latin. Latin was the base language. And um, after the time, from the Roman Empire, when the Roman Empire collapsed, and all these different regions of different ways of articulating Latin with uh, these mm-hmm. people, and then they give birth to French, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, Romanian, etc. I think that folks that are in different geographical areas, they're always going to have a different way, okay, to different ways to um, use the language. That's why we have sociolect, we have Rigilect, we have idolect because people will never um, articulate their thoughts in the same way. It will never be that way. That's why we, we have our own individual, individual way of articulating um, uh, our linguistic code. And if I take you, take me, and then we put ourselves to different uh, communities and different part of the world with different languages, and then we have a urge to communicate. We're gonna create something called a patent. A patent is, you know, when two languages come together and give forth to a third language that is not basic community. It's called a patent. Linguistic uh, linguists call that a patent. After a period of time, it is based in a community, so it's gonna be called a Creole. We have the case of the, uh, the uh, emergence of our Haitian Creole, which is the um, the uh, yeah. the uh, conflict two languages, languages from in Africa and languages from. Uh, from you know from the Mediterranean areas as well, and birth of the French uh, Haitian Creole language. Basically. So yeah, I think that we have to tell kids that the means of communication is very important, and we have to tell them that a certain period of time in their lives. And later, we have to come back to that and tell them that we that was not the, the whole truth. Okay. And uh, yes, you know about thank you. Oh, Second God. question. Yes. Yeah. And then you know. Yes, you can speak. Yeah, can I'm continue. here. I'm here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm listening. Yeah, let's go. We are listening. Oh, all, right. Yes. all right, all right, cool. And the, the, the first question. All years. Oh, good, good. The first yes. question was the uh, destination and final. Um, I think the word destination itself is an utopia that does not exist. There's never a thing called destination. So, <laughs> existence itself is an ongoing thing. It's like you know, I'm very interested in philosophy at the same time. It's like being is the, um, the, 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 uh, it, it, it's the collection of existing, it's the collection of existing at the same time. So ex- destination is a very, um, it's a very, let's say word, okay? Um, in life, when you put that you have a destination, you can have a short-term destination. You can have a exterior destination. For example, I want to have my degree in linguistics uh, next year, right? I would like to have my degree in, I would like to have a degree in law or uh, in pharmacy. That's a very, that's a very short-term and a very exterior destination. But in life, there's no destination. The destination is here and now, okay? Because when you put yourself, when you say that there's a final destination in language learning, you are going to be anxious, right? I remember there's a great Chinese philosopher whose name is Lao Tzu, who says that uh, if you're worried about the past, you're going to be depressed. If you're worried about the future, you're going to be anxious, right? Like, you're anxious. You want to get there. But I think that you have to enjoy the process. You have to find a great method, enjoying it, and then live with it, incorporating it, but not really worried about, you know, I have a final destination. I have my C1, C2 level. Because I was speaking to a friend of mine. He's an American. He's always telling me that I have a C3 level. You just put three uh, in English. Uh, you told me that that I have a C3 level. Just to say that I have a level that is above C2. Okay. So 
but I'm still learning a lot of things in English. Although I don't learn systematically the way that I used to, like going to a dictionary using, you know, idiomatic books, grammar yes. stuff. Yeah. I mostly yes. learn native speakers. I mostly learn reading a book, listening to a podcast, watching the videos on YouTube. And when I just I see a word that I don't know, I go to the dictionary and take it up. Or maybe I try to figure it out um, through the uh, the context in which the word is used. But I'm still learning. And American people are, are too, right? I talked to an American yeah, friend and told me that there are a lot of words. And I said that African-American vernacular English. He did not understand that word. African-American vernacular English. If you are not linguist and then you're familiar with work, you will not be able to understand that. If I use the word yeah. black English, she would understand. You see? It's because that we are always, we're constantly learning new things, learning new vocabulary words, learning new um, expressions. And we should yeah. not put that burden in our head that there's a final destination what we have to be very um we have to concentrate and to focus on is have, having a good method and talk to our mentors to see mm -hmm. that w whether we are uh moving forward and just keep going yeah yeah but so not as, yes as, as you talk about words uh, mm -hmm. this brings the word polysemic to my head and also mm -hmm. You know, when you are talking about words, I know that uh, the words, they are polysemic because one word might have different meanings. So mm -hmm. when it comes to contextualize, contextualize, for example, when you are putting the words in context. So mm -hmm. as an English learner, how mm -hmm. can you, because, you know, last time I was teaching a, mm -hmm. by the time I was teaching, but it was a C1 level. Mm -hmm. I saw a word in in a field in a spe in a specific field. The mm -hmm. word was illustration. But mm -hmm. when I asked the student in this way, what is the meaning of illustration? So mm -hmm. they say, "Oh, teacher, you know, to illustrate this." But in this way, it, it you know the word illustration mm -hmm. uh, in this context was referred to architecture because they told me that when you are talking about architecture there was a word illustration but the same way they write the uh, same way yes but mm -hmm. they have different meanings so how do you understand this polysemic so the words mm -hmm. are polysemic what can you say about this because one word has different meanings how can you explain the situation how can you tell the students to understand this meaning according to this context yes like, or, or we could talk or we could talk about like um homophone homograph uh -huh. exactly. yeah, yeah. how, how right. does or how do how do this stuff work in languages because sometimes when you are uh -huh. explaining the student what does that mean homophone homograph uh -huh. i mean he, for him what you are trying to explain it to him it nonsense. Mm -hmm. You as a <laughs> it's, it's, as, as someone, yes, of course. Who has yes. one? Yes. Probably me, uh -huh. you, Mr. Reigns. For example, now mm -hmm. we have been or we are or we have been studying mm -hmm. languages for many years. Probably if someone is trying to explain us what does that mean, those things. So I'm telling man, so we are going to take time, of course, uh, like over phone, over graphic, no, no, over names, so names, we are so going names. to take time. But someone who yeah. really wants, for example, if we consider English. If you consider English, someone who really wants to speak English, when you are trying to explain him that, Valentino, sometimes mm -hmm. he feels bothered. You as a linguist, yeah. what, what, what is your problem about this? Yeah, yeah. So that's a very uh, delicate um, question. And it's not only for people that are learning, like a, like a learner. It's for the, um, the native speaker, him or herself as well. Because you can see that, like, discrepancy in native speakers of writing this time. Okay, like for homophones and homographs in general. But in the speaking, because in the speaking comes before uh, speaking comes before um, writing, so it's less available for them because the speaking unit is coming just right after. The, the, the writing comes just right after. What I would say is that um, constitutionalization is is a method itself. It helps to be to connect with the language uh, much faster faster and um it also helps to you know to have a not to be uh, to depend upon uh, dictionary glossaries um other types of specialized dictionaries in general so 
it's 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 really great because it helps with your um native ability just native way to understand to pick up the language to pick up the meaning of of a of a of an expression of a enunciation so what i would suggest myself when it comes to almost one normal graph and how to pick up words different is to it's not to focus on a single enunciation because communication is not it's not it's not just one enunciation it's the whole thing it's the whole thing in general and we can see that in verbal and nonverbal communication like when you're talking right we are, we're just talking right now we're using languages delicately we, we're using english with different vocabulary words and we're trying to speak so that we can um list it our thoughts but more than 80 percent of communication is based on nonverbal like gesture uh you know tone tonalities intonation prosody all these things you have to pay attention to th these things okay yes. and if the person is referring to the thing that he's talking about that is in present the person might uh you know point to the thing with his finger okay so all these things uh, they, they help a lot in understanding uh a word understanding an expression sometimes i even talk to a friend of mine about that when an native speaker is listening to something they don't catch you know one of everything they yes just catch, catch yes they just the catch the idea is, i know exactly, exactly or they exactly. try to get the gist they got to uh -huh. i mean they try to get the gist of it the gist exactly. the gist of the speech mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. Exactly. exactly. But, but 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 now now for Valentino, now we are in the air. Now we are in the air because probably they are very soon and they are trying to understand the terms. The terms. That's oh, why. Yeah. Yes, that's why. That's why uh, um, uh, um, our 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 cameraman says that practice will always remain the key because we are. Yeah. Yes, who is listening to us? I mean, f f for him, grammar, vocabulary, like. All those things, uh -huh. they are important, but the best and point will remain uh -huh. practice. Now, yeah. uh, Valentino, we have at least like 13 minutes to finish your race. Oh. See, we got one hour, but <laughs> it was like, you know, this broadcast <laughs> is, is, is so hard. Mr. Valentino, mm -hmm. probably I will ask him the same question. Mm -hmm. As an English teacher, as a linguist, I want mm -hmm. you to, to get it down. When I say to get it down, I think you will really understand what I'm trying to talk. Because there are many students, they are they, they, they are listening to us. They are watching us now. Please okay, okay, yeah. tell them, advise them, to me, please tell them. As teacher can be had just said, practice will remain the key. Okay, no problem. I don't have any problem. No biggie with that. But you tell them to learn the languages. What mm -hmm. must they do, or what should they do to to learn? Because when you when you are talking about learning languages honestly they have one thing on their mind grammar mm -hmm. vocabulary grammar yeah. vocabulary grammar or, or expression or idioms that that's what they have in mind so you okay. can you tell them what take your time take your time mm -hmm. speak a little bit slow for us slowly and okay. tell them the best way in your view to learn mm -hmm. a languages all right very good all right all my all my uh, friends out there this is my idea when it comes to le learn a second, a third, or fourth, a fourth language. First and foremost, you should have a goal, right? You should have a goal. Why are you going to learn a language? Is it just to go to a country to study there? Is it to do business with people, you know, in another in another country? Is it trade. for exactly trade? Uh huh. Is it like um, just to you know to get a great good grade in a university or in school? What is your goal? And after the goal is to find the time because this is the most important thing that we don't talk about. It's the time, right? Uh, because you know a lot of people, for example, I can spend one hour a day learning a language. Other people can spend thirty minutes, forty-five minutes, um, etc. You find the time. Do not say that. Um, well. I have time, you know, tomorrow, you know, learning the language. No, you're just trying to find your own pace and say, okay, I'm going to take 30 minutes a day studying yes. a language. I'm going to do that. I'm going mm -hmm. to use this. I'm going to use this. 
channel because I use YouTube channels are very, very, very important these days. Kevin, you want to tell I'm, me? You want to tell me? You you you, you want to tell me? Uh, one of the best thing, one of the best method to learn a language is to have a plan. That's what you want to tell my exactly, audience. Exactly, exactly. Okay. You have a plan. If you don't, no, no, you Rims, won't be Rims, able. Rims, Rims, Rims. Probably okay. all my students yeah. will say, "Play." What 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 is he talking about? Because probably in the mind they will think that huh? you will say master your grammar, uh -huh. master your vocabulary. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they might be confused, or they are confused. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. This grammar is as I said, grammar is the extraction of communication, is the extraction of the language. It's not the language itself. Is yeah. what people use all the different uh, similarities in the language. And they theorize it. They just put it as a theory, and then uh, people go to school just to learn them. But grammar itself is not the language. It helps. It helps in a systematic way, but it's not the language. Not even. You might be interested in grammar if you're going to take a class. You're going to take a class in a university in the United States, and you want grammar just to uh, have a good grade and read great literature. Yeah, grammar is cool. But if you want to communicate the way that I'm communicating right now, I would say that start by immersing yourself in the language using different yes. uh, things that can stimulate you, get, that can give you the urge just to learn the language. But do not study the language, but learn the language. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So do not commit to memory because, you know, exactly. some students, eh, they think, Junior, uh, okay, me, I'm going to learn, I'm going to memorize. You know, mm -hmm. Professor Ikto, I love this man from the school. Uh -huh. yes. He said, uh -huh. he said yes, he said the sentence. Yes, our mentor, he said the sentence, but it was in Spanish. And he uh -huh. said, C'est un forgeant qu'on devient forgeron. He likes to exactly. say this, so practice makes perfect. So I mm -hmm. love to say this, me. The only mm -hmm. one way you can speak a language is only when you speak it. Because exactly. if you don't speak the language, you will never be able to speak it. Trust me, I'm not making puns. I'm not playing with the words. No, th this is not my plan. So now I'm telling mm -hmm. you the truth, guys. The only one way you can... Because here, we live in Turkey, Mr. Valentino. Mm -hmm. So... Okay. Yeah. And we are waiting for you? <laughs> so we are waiting for you, of course. No. The problem oh, yeah, is that... <laughs> me and Junior, Junior and me and the other guys, we are still fighting with the Turkish language to learn it. We are fighting. Yeah, okay, okay. We know many words. We know a lot of we words, but yes. when it comes to speak, yes. you know, mm -hmm. we can't. So we finally exactly. realized that the only yes. one way you can speak a language is when we speak uh -huh. it, guys. That's 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 it. To you know, to join you on your approach exactly. Mm -hmm. When you speak, so do not memorize. We just need to learn. That's the key. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. Let me so that make now, as, as you say, as you say, excuse me. We 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 should have a plan. We should have mm -hmm. a plan because exactly. Um, Rams has just said practice makes perfect, but I was listening mm -hmm. to um, a motivator and he say practice makes improvement. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I mean, he, yeah. he, he, he said, if you keep saying practice mm -hmm. makes perfect, practice makes perfect, and if the person does that practice, probably the person will be discouraged. I mean, it is better for you as a teacher to say to the person, practice makes improvement. I mean, exactly. he thinks that if he's practice, of course, he's going to improve because everyone is trying to be perfect. Everyone is trying to be the best. Do you understand? And the the key is that they will leave. never be perfect. That's the point. The point is that they will never be perfect because perfection does not exist. Let's consider okay. this. <laughs> and and that's, that's a very interesting idea. And that's why there is an English expression to say that there's always room for improvement. There's always something that you need to improve on, to get better on. And if you go to the etymology of the word, perfection itself, that we get to see that perfection is from latent perfectus, which means that that is not attainable. It is just an utopia. Perfection does not exist, as you said, Mr. Ryman, right? Exactly. Perfection is something that you put in your head um, just to move forward. But the word is that perfectus does not exist. It is yes. exactly that that is attainable. And that's the reason why 
uh, a lot of, you know, back in all the civilizations, they give that idea of perfection to, to God, to the, the all conscious, the all knower, because yeah. that is the one that does not need any other forces just to uh, experience reality in general. So perfection does not exist. There's exactly. always one point. Of and then you should not put the language as a burden. Oh, I have to learn today. No, you have to make it fun. You have to be, it has to be funny. Right, and you have to have your friends. You have to communicate. And you have to respect others. But uh, you have to help others, big be- other beginners. If you want advanced or intermediate, help others. That's a good way to learn as well. And you have to communicate. Get it out of your head. Get it out of your system. Communication is key. Right. Yes. It, you have to. Mr. Valentino, Mr. Valentino, we have we have Legend yes. Schneider. Legend okay, Schneider. Schneider says uh-huh. that he has a question. Schneider, you can ask a question. While yes, Mr. Yes. Valentin is trying to, 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 to give yeah. some piece of advice, of course, you can ask a question. This is yeah. my classmate. This is my classmate. Schneider, big, up. big shout out to you from ENS. Schneider, yeah, really let's give yeah. <laughs> my friend. Schneider. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you can, you can keep continue, on Valentin. Valentin. You can continue, yeah. Um, yes, I always said that. So we're not trying to be perfect. So we're just trying to um, be better. We're comparing ourselves to ourselves, okay? Uh, the person that we, we... Excuse me, excuse me, please. Say something, say something here for me, please. Say something, it's a yes. question. Can you read from your yes. ribs? Yes, I'm listening. No, can you read? Speaking, speaking quickly, is it the evidence is it, of speaking is it the English very well? Speaking English real well? Yes, yeah, because there, 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 there are many guys what happened? Huh? They speak very quickly. You know, they're like, <laughs> Abraham, we'd like to see you now in Spain. I mean, when, when people talk, <laughs> 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 yeah, can we yeah. define? They, yes, they, they, we, they, speak, we, they speak very quick, speak very quick to, uh-huh. how can I say, to impress the audience or to impress, to impress the, the audience. Can yeah. we yes, say yes. Speaking, speaking fast is the evidence yeah. to tell someone master a language? Mm-hmm. Um, there's a there's a saying which is that when you speak fast, <laughs> I'm talking about an impression. When you speak slow, you're more honest. Okay, you're more honest when you speak slow. Like you know, when you're listening to great speak, um, speakers like Barack Obama, uh, and the Mandela, they speak yes. very, very, very. Slow. They try to speak slow, even though Barack Obama speaks fast in natural way. So I think that speaking fast, it has to be with the natural rhythm of the person myself i cannot say that i speak slow i uh, that's the way i speak in general exactly. i uh yeah I, I speak even in haitian creole i speak a little bit i don't know you know natural. most of them something natural let's say fast. Yeah, exactly yeah um but speaking fast is a myth that people put in the head of other people especially students um that if you're not able to understand someone was speaking fast, thus you don't have a sufficient uh, ability um, to speak or to understand the language. It's a myth that has been debunked by a lot of linguists, Mm -hmm. Uh, but we still have this in Haiti, especially, because Haitian people believe that, a lot of Haitian people, especially people who who have have no uh, specialty in language in general, they see them, they have this, you know, um, you know, idea that when somebody speaks the language very fast, the person speaks the language well. That's a, that's a myth. That's a myth. You have to compare the, the, the pace of the person in his yes. mother tongue and the pace of the person when he's speaking the second language. I know in English, it sounds a little bit diff- different because in English, a lot of English is not a phonetic language, like in Spanish, for, um, Italian. Uh, like in English, you have a lot of, uh, you know, you have kinetic speech, words are linking all together. In kinetic speech, you can have one word here, and then the, the, the ending of this word, for example, ends with D, T, and then it goes, it's going to influence the next word. And that gives us tendency, okay, that the person is speaking fast. But in reality, the person is not speaking fast. Right? If I say, in reality, the person is not speaking fast. I don't speak fast right now. It's just, I'm just, you know, I'm blending all the words together, and you have exactly. this kind of tension <laughs> that I am fast. Exactly. But it's just like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's, 
deliberately speaking fast, the, the person does not speak the language. That's all. Yeah. So we, we don't really have much time, Mr. Williams. Teacher Mackison says speaking quickly is not quite an evidence to show that someone master language. Master language. Their speed should be natural. natural. I think. Exactly. But I think I, I, Schneider we would like to ask a question, but I don't really, I don't really see the question, Schneider. Yeah. What should I do to read? But we don't really see the. Yeah, the what, I, yeah. what should you do to veer to I we, so we already for, for the question so now but, we, brother, are, like, we are about I, to call it today we are I, about I, to call it today but um but teacher i have Valentin, if teacher you, Valentin, if yes you, i have so i have, I have last because, I, I, excuse me mr Rent. excuse okay, me mr. Okay. Rent. Okay. i am going to say that the public and for learn mm -hmm. is a platform that is open for everybody for example mm -hmm. we have a lot of students from ens I'm going to contact mm -hmm. them if they are available, if they have any broadcast. So mm -hmm. this platform is here for them. Doesn't mean to see me. Doesn't mean mm -hmm. to see Rems, Mr. Valentino. If you have any broadcast you want to help, only you, I can only prepare my studio and send you the link and you get it and you get your broadcast whenever right. you want. So now if you have your friend, French, mm -hmm. Spanish, mm -hmm. English. Mm -hmm. So if you see that that guy can manage, like can can know exactly the topic that he is going to debate, so Airflow is open to mm -hmm. help those people understand uh, the best way to learn languages. And now, Mr. Rims, we have the question: What do you yeah. do more about your English skills? That's the oh. first one. Did, did you learn at yeah. ANS only, or mm -hmm. you read a lot? Did you read a lot of literature books? Answer calls now. Mr. That's Valentino, a bunch of questions from that's our the last, that's the last question. I'm gonna. I'm, okay. You are going to answer, and after Mr. Rems, I don't know if Mr. Rems, Mr. Rems has something to say. And after mm -hmm. Mr. Rems, you will have much time to greet your families, your friends, your classmates mm -hmm. from a uh, linguistic faculty, ENS. Mm -hmm. I know those guys are watching for you now. So now you have the time to answer, Mr. Schneider, let's go. Yes. Nice. Listen, yeah. Where did I get my English skills? Um, basically, I went to ENS uh, uh, in 2015. Uh, I think recently that was 2014, one year ahead of me. <laughs> so, in and I should, well, you know, to finish in 2019. When, when you say ENS, when you say ENS, what, what, what do you mean? Because probably they are. Yeah, you know, that's that's exactly. That. Yeah. ENS is a college. It's a college. Uh, in Haiti, it's based in Haiti. It's a, a state, state college where you go to, you know, to have um, just to have to gain some competency when it comes to teaching different things. My case, yes. case it was um, language, okay, modern languages. Uh, I went there just to um, brush up on my, uh, you know, ability to teach languages and also, you know, learn Spanish because at that time I didn't have a great, you know, I didn't speak Spanish that well. So ENS was exactly the uh, the the place to give me a great, really great ground in, in Spanish. So for English, I didn't actually learn. I didn't actually learn English there for English. I learned specifically specifically Spanish there with a lot of teachers, as, as you mentioned, Hector, uh, Madame Valles, uh, Madame yes. Gabo, a lot of Garmandia. others. Garmandia. Yeah, Garmandia, yeah. So uh, was teaching um, Spanish uh, phonetics. Um, for English, uh, I can say that I started learning English um, when I was, I started learning English when I was very, very, very young. And I went to ANS just to have a uh, diploma and also to be a professional teacher. But I didn't actually, I didn't go there just to learn English, just to study English. I, that's why I wanted to study philosophy when I got to UNS, but I didn't have the possibility still because, and I saw the opportunity just to learn Spanish and I said, okay, let me just continue with my studies maybe. And then I can really, I can have a job in teaching languages. That would be cool. Uh, I think for English, what I basically do is I enjoy reading a book. Uh, I enjoy reading books. I enjoy listening to uh, scientific debate in English and I enjoy uh, talking to, you know, a lot of foreigners and, you know, foreign friends that I have in the U.S., I have in other countries like in Brazil, et cetera. I read a lot of books. You can see I read books in literature. I want to show you a book right here. Uh, this is history. 
right here. Uh -huh. um, United States history from 16 to 18, uh, 80, 1987. So that's about, about the American um, history. I'm very interested in these things. But I'm not learning English. That's how I started learning English, though. And I went to normal school. They give me good grab on grammar, and I focus on grammar a little bit. That's why I can see that I have a perception of the now. But I learned the language by immersing myself in native content. Yeah, I, I don't really consider English as a, I, I can say it's still a second language to me, English and French altogether. But English is almost all, it's almost the same as Haitian Creole to me because I use English the same way that I use Haitian Creole. I have a lot of friends. I use a lot in English. I even read in English more than in, in, in Haitian Creole, even in French. In French, they are balanced. So English <laughs> is just a natural way, yeah, just to understand. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that it's that's the to me that's the best way. And and sometimes if I really want to broaden my horizon, uh, just to know a lot of words. For example, there's a, a word, an expression that I learned last year in English. Uh, it was to get caught in short. That's a very expression. That is a very idiomatic expression that I I I I've never heard about that. Um, I had never heard about it to get caught in short. So I learned it from a book of literature. I was reading a book, uh, this a book right here that I have in my bookshelf called um, The Adventure of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, which is a really great American writer. And to get caught in short means, like in Haiti, you have this, like, you know, this kind of um, toilet that you have in Haiti that are not very modern. And then, like, when you go to the countryside, you're passing by and you feel like going to defecate, but you did not plan for that. You see? You did not plan for it, but you have to go to defecate. You have to get caught in that. Yeah. So that's how I pick up, you know, vocabulary and words that are very important. Things that are very direct uh, to the culture. But I don't really study, you know, in a book, in a grammar book. Um, yes. I only open grammar books when I'm going to prepare my whole class because I teach in a school in Pitch something called and I'm the one who's responsible for language in general in the English department, especially English. So when I'm going to teach in NS, NS3 and NS4 and NS2, I just open a grammar book. And I try to find different ways just to teach the students uh, in a more, um, you know, in a way that it could be very simple. And I try to find different definitions. Like if I'm going to talk about flaws, if I'm going to talk about tenses, aspects, what's the best way to present that to the students. But myself, I understand these things in a natural way. I don't really have to go to a grammar book just to understand them because I'm using the language as if it, it as if it it were my my uh, mother tongue, I would say. Exactly. Although I have a lot of questions in English, I'm still improving uh, my uh, you know, my understanding, my writings, all these things have to do with culture because I'm not gonna be involved in and it's gonna be very difficult to understand everything culturally speaking. But um Thanks. still picking up things. But in a very gradual way. That's wonderful. Brother, no, me, uh, yes. to be honest, me, we're going to done me. I, I want to conclude. It's, yes, it's yeah, always, we're about to call it a day. It's it's mm -hmm. always a pleasure for me to hear from you and to learn from you. I am honest. Yes. It's you mm -hmm. know what I love. For example, do you know, you know, when it comes to languages, I love to learn about people or about speaker not not talk about grammar or today we're going to talk about past perfect so it's how you can describe the situation you are in in this language how you can improvise in this language this is exactly how someone knows the language and this is exactly the situation that i'm living now and brother to tell the truth to be honest and i'm really proud of you both my two seniors you have been and you are always my seniors i have been following you for years approximately two or four years and thank you so mm -hmm. much because i have the chance to be here with you guys Lems, and for like is yours and for like is yours and for like is valentino's valentino's <laughs> now you have you have time to give pieces mm -hmm. of advice and you have time to great to salute I don't know your family mm -hmm. to say hi because mm -hmm. probably they will be happy. I think your mother will be happy yeah. when she sees yeah. that his son yeah. <laughs> the world 
the world is watching you so now many Turkish students now they're watching for you they are texting me they say congratulations guys so yo congratulations now you have one minute to give mm -hmm. some pieces of mm -hmm. advice and uh, all of us and say hi to some friends yes so my the piece of advice is guys just get it out of your head um implement the language learn and keep moving do not worry about you know all the people's uh methods other people's way of doing of learning the language just trying to have your own way and compare yourself to yourself because uh there's an american president who said that comparing it is the thief of, of joy like if you're comparing yourself to other people you're not going to be uh happy for the rest of your life so the added is just comparing yourself to yourself so greeting i have a lot of friends actually when i'm going to share this live on facebook they are going to watch it again because uh maybe they're gonna watch it you know just to have uh just to understand to have all pieces of information that we We've been um, um, sharing uh, here uh, people that are from FLA, the Faculty of Linguistics in Haiti, and um, especially in the fourth year, um, you know, people, a couple of friends from ENS as well. Uh, they call them as the year. So, and also I have, you know, people that are watching my B friend, you know, <laughs> other people that are watching. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I have a friend of mine. His name, is, uh, her name is uh, Julie Cam. She's actually watching. I have Emmanuel Ignat. He's, he's going to be watching as well. Um, so, guys, thank you so much. And I know that but, my but, mother. But, 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 but I see you, 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 you don't say hi to your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, she said this. She said maybe she doesn't specify the name. She doesn't say the name, but she said a yes, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In Asnea, Judicam, Exxon. Okay, you know, guys, that I actually like you. I love you guys. Uh, the whole crowd from Fossey of Linguistics. So thank you so much, guys, for, for this time. Junior, Mr. Ryan, that's a really, really good honor, really good opportunity for me to be with you. I'm very pleased, very delighted just to share this panel with you guys, and I hope to do it in the future. So yes. you're welcome, bro. Thank you, Mr. Valentino, and thank you for joining. Thank you so much. And we hope that we will play another broadcast probably in May or June, probably. But as I said to you, whenever you need my platform at this time, okay. at mm -hmm. this time, you can say, Teacher Junior, today I want to be live on your platform. Now you will get you will get your platform me. I'm gonna promote mm -hmm. you. I'm gonna I'm gonna promote you. So you're gonna have this platform to enjoy your broadcast. I think after offline, we are going to talk about it. Thank you so much, Mr. Yeah. Valentino. And thank you so thank much, you. Mr. Mr. Rames, Mr. Rames, thank, you. That's my thank you, thank you so much. So thank you so much, man. So I think offline we are going to talk. So I think you can stay in my studio. You can remain in my studio. I'm going to finish. Just wait for me. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, it was info line information languages. Our mission is to teach you English, French, Spanish, and help you to understand the best way to learn languages today. We had a little talk with teacher Valentino, linguist. I'm telling you, I'm proud of my guy. I'm proud of Rent. I'm proud of Kirby. I'm proud of Mikey. I'm proud of all the English teachers around the world. Don't forget one thing you will do for Wahari. Subscribe, like, share that video. And I'm telling you, that video will be one of the most, one of the most, Okay, I'm not going to say it because probably they have many t-shirts, they have many t-shirts, they have many I'm jealous because what you say. I'm not going to say it. Okay, no problem. Excuse me. So thank you for watching. Let's repeat together. Info learn. Can you say? Information languages. See you next Saturday.